space the final frontier come with us as we explore and unravel the mysteries of what lies beyond our planet earth strap yourself in Get your spacesuits ready as we prepare for takeoff in T minus five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to Inside Outer Space, Apollo 11. It is perhaps one of the most famous space missions of all time. Today, let's discuss the Apollo 11 space mission. Apollo 11 is the first space mission that has landed the first two humans on the moon. On July 20, 1969, astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin successfully landed the Eagle Lunar Module at 20 hundred hours 18 minutes UTC. As the story goes, it was Neil Armstrong who became the first person to step on the moon. He was followed shortly by Buzz Aldrin some 20 minutes later. Together, they spent approximately 2.25 hours on the moon's surface. There was a third person to the crew who remained in the command module Columbia in the moon's orbit while Aldrin and Armstrong step on the moon. The third person from their crew is none other than fellow astronaut Michael Collins. Apollo 11 was not the first of its kind. Actually, it was the fifth mission launched by NASA's Apollo program. Apollo 11 was launched into outer space via a Saturn V rocket from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida on July 16, 1969. The spacecraft itself has three main parts, the command module, the service module, and the lunar module. Let's take a look. The command module is the main module and it contains the cabin which can house three astronauts. It is also the only module that landed back on Earth. The service module, on the other hand, contains the components responsible for providing the astronauts with propulsion, electricity, oxygen, and water. Finally, the lunar module is a two-stage transportation module that allowed the astronauts to land on the moon and launch off its surface. It took the Saturn V rocket around three days to reach the moon's orbit. Upon reaching lunar orbit, Armstrong and Aldrin then transferred to the lunar module Eagle and landed in the area called the Sea of Tranquility. After exploring and staying on the moon's surface for 21 hours, they used the lunar module to leave the moon and rejoin with Collins in the command module. The pair also brought with them around 21.5 kilograms or 47 pounds of lunar material to bring back to Earth. The lunar module Eagle was eventually jettisoned in space as the command module performed maneuvers on course back to Earth. The trio successfully returned to Earth on July 24, landing safely in the Pacific Ocean. As this was happening, the moon landing was broadcast on TVs across the Earth to an international audience, which people fondly remember with a quote from Neil Armstrong, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. The Apollo 11 effectively ended the space race, a period of geopolitical tension during the Cold War era where the USA and the USSR were competing to develop space travel and send humans in space.
Kuiper Belt We've talked about our solar system's asteroid belt, an area in between Mars and Jupiter occupied by large space debris. Today, however, let's talk about another region, this time extending from the orbit of Neptune. It's located somewhere around 50 astronomical units away from the Sun. The Kuiper Belt is a circumstellar area that goes beyond the known planets. It's a lot like the asteroid belt, which consists of small to large bodies and space debris that are remnants of the creation of the solar system around 4.6 billion years ago. Most of the space debris comprising the Kuiper Belt are frozen chunks of methane, ammonia, and water. The Kuiper Belt is said to be approximately 20 times bigger than the asteroid belt. The Kuiper Belt is also home to three recognized dwarf planets, Haumea, Makemake, and the most famous of them all, Pluto. Pluto, of course, was previously classified as a planet, but was later reclassified as a dwarf planet in 2006. Scientists also theorize that some of the solar system's moons, such as Neptune's Triton and Saturn's Phoebe, may have originated somewhere in the Kuiper Belt. The Kuiper Belt got its name from the Dutch-American astronomer Gerard Kuiper although he did not solely predict its existence. Sometimes the Kuiper Belt is also called the Edgeworth Kuiper Belt in recognition of another scientist, Kenneth Edgeworth, who also came up with his own ideas behind its existence. Objects observed at the Kuiper Belt are called KBOs or Kuiper Belt Objects. The first KBO was observed in 1992 by Dave Hewitt and Jane Liu. KBOs are usually named after the gods and goddesses of different mythologies. Eris, for example, is named after the Greek goddess of discord and strife. Haumea, on the other hand, is the Hawaiian goddess of fertility and childbirth. Comets discovered on the Kuiper Belt, on the other hand, are usually named after the surnames of the people who discovered them. In 2006, scientists discovered a KBO that initially appeared to be 10% larger than Pluto. This object, called 2003 UB313, or Eris, is said to orbit the Sun once in 560 years and is estimated to have a varying distance of 38 to 98 AU. Since the discovery of Eris, astronomers sought to classify if Eris were to be named as the 10th planet in the solar system. Eventually, the International Astronomical Union reclassified Eris as well as Pluto and the asteroid Ceres into a category of their own as dwarf planets. In 2015, NASA's New Horizons spacecraft became the first man-made object to fly past Pluto and give us a glimpse of the Kuiper Belt. Uranus, the seventh planet from the Sun coming in with a diameter of 51,118 kilometers or 31,763 miles and a mass of 8.68 times 10 to the 25th power kilogram or 4.184 times 10 to the 27th power pounds equal to the mass of 15 Earths with 27 moons, 13 rings and an orbit period of 30,687 days or 84 years Years, with a temperature of approximately negative 216 degrees Celsius or negative 356.8 degrees Fahrenheit. It is one of the coldest planets in the solar system. 
Welcome to Uranus. Uranus was officially discovered by musician and astronomer Sir William Herschel in 1781. It is said that before Herschel's time, the planet would have been too dim to be observed by the ancient people of the past. Actually, Herschel first thought that he discovered a comet and only confirmed that Uranus was a planet after a few years have passed. Uranus turns on its axis once in 17 hours and 14 minutes. It rotates in a retrograde fashion, which means that it rotates the opposite direction of Earth. A year in Uranus is equivalent to almost 84 Earth years. Uranus is also known as an ice giant. It has an upper layer of hydrogen and helium. Below this layer is an ice mantle that covers a core made up of rock and ice. The upper atmosphere of Uranus is made up of water, ammonia, and iced methane crystals giving the planet a bluish color. Uranus is said to be one of the coldest planets with its minimum atmospheric temperature of negative 224 degrees Celsius or negative 371 degrees Fahrenheit. Uranus also has two sets of thin rings. These are comprised of 11 inner rings and two outer rings. As of 1986, only the Voyager 2 spacecraft has flown by Uranus with a distance of 81,500 kilometers or 50,641.7 miles, showing us close-up images of the planet, its moons, and rings. SETI It's a true and tried trope in most science fiction. But let's stop and ask ourselves, are we really alone in the universe? While there are still no definitive answers to that question, this however does not stop the curiosity of amateur enthusiasts and seasoned astronomers alike to seek out life beyond our planet. The search for extraterrestrial intelligence, or SETI, is the collective term used to describe the collective scientific endeavor of looking for intelligent life in outer space. And no, it is not science fiction. Let's look at a quick history of SETI. The search for intelligent life beyond our own came about at the start of the space age in 1957. This was the year that the Soviet Union successfully launched Sputnik, the first artificial Earth satellite. Just two years after Sputnik 1, physicists Philip Morrison and Giuseppe Cocconi from Cornell University published an article on the possibilities of radio communication in space. Naturally, this led to curiosity as scientists, both professional and amateur alike, showed interest to probe the stars for possible radio communication sent by other intelligent life forms from across outer space. In April of 1960, a young radio astronomer from West Virginia, USA, by the name of Frank Drake, created his own 26-meter radio telescope to look for transmissions in space. He spent several weeks listening for any signs of extraterrestrial signals. This project came to be known as Project Ozma and is considered one of the first modern SETI research projects. Today, there have been at least 98 more SETI projects launched around the world since Project Ozma. NASA became interested in SETI at around the 1970s. And it launched its own SETI research in 1988 and started observations in 1992. Unfortunately, NASA's SETI research was cut short the following year due to a U.S. Congress decision. The SETI Institute, on the other hand, was founded in 1984 in California, USA. The Institute aimed to facilitate SETI research as well as educational programs related to life in the universe. The SETI Institute also managed to get private funding to continue some of NASA's SETI research. 
the SETI Institute launched Project Phoenix, a 100-day project stretched across five and a half years, constantly monitoring the sky for extraterrestrial signals. The University of California, Berkeley, also has its own SETI project named Serendip. On the other side of the world, there's also the independent research group, SETI Australia Center from the University of West Sydney. Both of these groups have been working together to comb through all channels and radio transmissions in space. So, are we really alone in the universe? Who knows the answer? But until then, the world's SETI researchers will continue to keep looking out for the answer. NASA Now, let's take a look at the most famous and arguably the most accomplished space research agency in the world. Today, let's talk about the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or more commonly known as NASA. NASA is an independent government agency under the executive branch of the U.S. federal government. Its primary responsibilities include the U.S. Civilian Space Program, along with aeronautics and aerospace research. NASA was actually founded in response to the early Soviet space achievements during the period known as the Space Race. NASA was formed from the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, or NACA. It was in 1958 when U.S. President Dwight Eisenhower established NASA by signing the National Aeronautics and Space Act. Since then, NASA has been at the forefront of spaceflight and aeronautics research. One of NASA's first high-profile projects was called Mercury, a project whose main focus was to learn if humans could survive in the environment of space. Mercury was then followed by Project Gemini, which sent two astronauts in space as research and preparation for a trip to the moon. Perhaps one of NASA's most famous projects is the Apollo Project, a series of planned missions with the goal of sending humans into the moon. Project Apollo eventually achieved this goal in July of 1969 with the Apollo 11 mission followed by five more successful trips to the moon. This was also known as the landmark event that ended the space race and paved the way for the international cooperation in space research. Among other things, NASA also pioneered the space lab, the first suborbital space station and the precursor to the International Space Station. Teaming up with the USSR, NASA also launched the Apollo-Soyuz test projects in the 1970s. NASA then refocused efforts on the space shuttle program from the 1970s through the 1980s. This project used a reusable spacecraft which features a space plane and large detachable rockets. This eventually developed into the Shuttle Mir program when both the US and Russian governments collaborated on a series of space missions in the 90s. International cooperation with other agencies in the 90s led to the development and launch of the International Space Station, to date the biggest habitable man-made satellite in Earth's low orbit. Lastly, let's take a look at some of NASA's unmanned spacecraft developed to go beyond Earth and send valuable data back to our planet. Today, NASA has launched over a thousand unmanned space missions. Some notable examples are the Explorer 1, launched in 1958. It is the first unmanned U.S. satellite. Mariner Program, a series of unmanned space missions that sent space probes to study Mars, Venus, and Mercury. Viking 1, launched in 1976 the first successful unmanned spacecraft to land on Mars. 
Galileo, the first unmanned craft to probe Jupiter's atmosphere. The Legal Status of Space Here is an interesting question. Ever wondered who owns the places that people discover in space? Who owns outer space even? Let's talk about space law. The law that encompasses national and international guidelines governing activities in outer space. Before we start, it is important to take note, however, that no one nation owns space. And since nations are independent with each other, there is also no one accepted legal take on space law. However, there are a couple of international conventions that most nations have signed and agreed upon. The Treaty on Principles Governing the Activities of States and the Exploration and Use of Outer Space, including the Moon and other celestial bodies or more commonly known as the Outer Space Treaty, is an international treaty that forms the basis of space law. It was opened for signatures in the US, UK, and Soviet Union on January 27, 1967, and took effect in October of the same year. Currently, the 107 nations are party to the treaty, with another 23 nations who are signatories. Some of the key points of the treaty include the ban on placing weapons of mass destruction in Earth's orbit, or installing any and all such weapons in the Moon or any other celestial body. It also prohibits weapons testing in space or any such celestial body. The treaty also includes provisions that prevent any government from laying claim to any natural resource in space and also prohibits governments to claim sovereignty over territories in space. And that was another interstellar trip across the universe. Remember to join us next time for another mission to the cosmos and beyond. Only on Inside Outer Space.